Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Vessel rescuing has been around since the 15th century. As ships grew bigger and new categories emerged, the U.S. developed smart and tailored methods to rescue crews and billion-dollar ships. The process of rescuing a ship involves several procedures, including the towing, refloating, and repair of the ship. Salvage operations are subject to the no cure, no pay principle established by the Brussels Convention of 1910. That means a salvage company that did not succeed in saving the ship and or its cargo receives nothing. However, in 1989, this rule was expanded by introducing the Enhanced Salvage Award. This compensates the salvage companies if appropriate measures to prevent or limit environmental damage were taken. There are many types of maritime salvage operations. Offshore salvage, harbor salvage, cargo and equipment salvage, afloat salvage, clearance salvage, and shipwreck salvage. Specifying the type of salvage operation is essential, as each kind involves special equipment and processes. Weather conditions, technical issues, and human errors are all factors that might cause catastrophic scenarios. On the 8th of September, 2019, a miscalculation of the vessel's stability caused the MV Golden Ray to capsize. It was carrying 4,100 cars and 24 crew members. The 660-foot-long car carrier overturned while departing the port of Brunswick en route to the port of Baltimore. Failure to determine the vessel's stability caused the vessel to run aground at 90 degrees. As the port side pilot door and two watertight doors were open, the ship flooded just after it sank. Things got worse when the ship caught fire. Once authorities received the distress call, they put safety as their highest priority. Firefighters and highly skilled teams arrived by sea and air to put out fires and rescue the 24 crew members. The U.S. Coast Guards deployed an MH-65 Dolphin helicopter, from which air crewmen hoisted Golden Ray crew members one by one. Five hours later, the air crew heroically succeeded in evacuating 20 crewmen. However, Getting out the four remaining men was a tremendous challenge. Helped by the tapping noises, rescuers located the crewmen. They drilled a hole in the ship's hull near the propellers. This was done to save the four engineers who were stuck in the control room and engine room in a sweltering 150 degrees. Fire, 
Flooding and saltwater corrosion meant the ship was declared a total loss, estimated at 62.5 million. And an estimated 142 million worth of cargo was lost. The vehicles were mainly brand new Kia and Hyundai cars, manufactured in Mexico, plus some other imported cars including Chevrolet, GMC, GM, Mercedes-Benz and Dodge. The salvage plan consisted of removing the wreckage by cutting it into eight giant pieces weighing up to 4,500 tons each. But how? The car carrier was massive in size. The solution? The Versabar VB10,000, the largest heavy lift vessel ever built in the U.S. The ship has a crane capable of lifting up to 6,800 tons, making it the ideal solution. Before dismantling the vessel, the salvage company emptied the ship's 24 fuel tanks, about 250,000 gallons of fuel. The auto liner was cut using a gigantic diamond cutting chain suspended from the VB10,000. After pulling it from the water, the crane put each section on a barge which took them to shore for scrapping. It was a tiring mission. Several times the ship caught on fire, slowing down the process. Environmental concerns increase the complexity of the operation as well. When removed, several cars were still inside the sections. Thus, a weight shedding operation was taken sequentially. After almost two years of hard work, the salvage operation was completed in October 2021. Authorities arguably declared the MV Golden Ray wreck removal the largest in U.S. history. One common salvage operation in the Gulf of Mexico is the Idle Iron. This operation consists of decommissioning and removing rings used for offshore drilling, as well as oil and gas production. Usually, these superstructures need to be dismantled and removed to reclaim the site, minimize environmental hazards, and suppress any safety risks that might occur. It's not unusual to see the Versabar 10,000 performing this task. Besides its powerful cutting chain, the heavy lift vessel has tremendous lifting power. The structure is made of two trusses, about 240 feet tall, each connected to a barge. The barges are nearly 300 feet long and 72 feet wide, with an engine capable of 4,000 horsepower each. The VV-10,000 uses its crane and pulling power to retrieve this rig. As the crane lifts the load, Two tugboats maneuver a separate barge and steer it under the structure.
There are 160 feet of clearance between the two barge holes for this barge. Once the barge finds its place, a crane operator carefully puts the load down on it, which will be transported to shore for future use. In 2011, this unique vessel succeeded in reclaiming a 2,600-ton topside rig and pulled a 9,000-ton jacket to a reef site. The process of decommissioning oil rigs involves plenty of procedures. This job comes with its unique challenges. The rigs are often located in the middle of the sea, where weather conditions are not really friendly. Before dismantling the rig, experienced men and women conduct detailed planning and preparation to ensure a smooth and efficient removal campaign. In addition to their engineering skills, the team has an excellent collaborative attitude. Ensuring communication throughout the entire project. Meeting deadlines is important. However, doing it without injuries or accidents is crucial. Thus, safety equipment is used and members are also well trained in safety procedures just in case of emergencies. This dismantling has finished. Now the team is ready to transport the loads to a scrapyard. Before leaving the platform location, Clearance verification is conducted to ensure that no debris or potential obstructions remain. Actually, scrapping is not the only solution for recycling these abandoned rigs. The United States often uses these platforms to develop artificial reefs. This practice is known as rigs to reefs. The concept was initiated by the U.S. Department of Interior in 1985. The first rig to reef was created from the jacket of High Island A298. Since then, hundreds of structures have been converted into reefs, especially in the Gulf of Mexico, where oil production platforms are concentrated. Rigs are made of solid and durable steel, providing shelter for marine life in open waters. This increases ocean fisheries and enhances marine habitat. Obsolete cargo ships might also be recycled into artificial reefs. The Kraken, a 370-foot-long cargo ship, now serves as home to thousands of fish species. Recycling wreckage or unused ships such as oil rigs into reefs is significant to preserving our sea flora and fauna.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.